I'm going to discuss briefly why the Bigode Bigodi Masters stock suspension assembly is terrible. I'm going to try to throw out as much data here as quickly as I can. It's probably going to take me several minutes. Let's talk about first with normal mountain bike stuff. Since this suspension linkage is sort of similar to many um, mountain bike rear wheel linkages, when you set up a mountain bike's rear wheel, something with really good suspension, there's going to be a ratio of wheel travel, wheel vertical travel to shock compression. Typically, it's going to be about a 2.5 to 1 ratio. That means for um, the wheel is going to move two and a half times farther than the shock typically for good setup. Um, a normal mountain bike shock might have 50 millimeters of travel, and that would yield something about 125 millimeters of wheel travel, right, at a 2.5 ratio. Um, you would then, knowing what that ratio is, you can figure out how strong of spring pressure you need for the shock compression for um, the rider weight. Of course, that's assuming that the weight is distributed between the rear wheel and the front wheel, so the ratios are a little bit different for our unicycles. And our unicycles weigh a lot, uh, a lot more than a mountain, a good mountain bike, right? But about 2.5 ratio, um, a normal mountain bike spring might be between a 300 and a 600 on the very high end for a mountain bike spring, kind of, right? That would be um, 300 pound inches of spring rate for the spring compression. Let's talk about the master now. Um, the master has, oh, and also the um, lower that ratio number, the more weight it can more easily support, theoretically. So a heavy rider might want a mountain bike with a shock ratio geometry that's closer to uh, like 2.1, um, where a 2.71 a 2.7 ratio might require a stronger spring. A rider with a 2.1 shock geometry would be able to use a lighter weight spring. The Bigode Master has an atrocious 3.3 ratio. The um, Master advertises 80 millimeters of travel, but actually only has 70 millimeters of travel if you include the bump stops there at the top and the bottom of the fork sliders on either side of the wheel. So 70 millimeters of travel, and at full compression, there is only 20 millimeters of shock travel. So you can see the shock squeezing through here. I have my dial caliper here. If you want to kind of curious how this sits in here, this is approximately 70 millimeters. This doesn't have to be precise for what we're doing here. So this sits in the wheel physically like this, and as it compresses, it moves like this. And the full stroke of the shock is just 21 millimeters from bump stop to bump stop. The shock in here is one of the worst quality air springs on the planet, give or take a little, with only 35 millimeters of potential travel, but it doesn't matter because the master only utilizes 20 millimeters of shock travel. 70 goes in, divided by 21 is 3.3 repeating. So what that means with this high ratio is that it requires an incredibly strong spring to support it. The geometry is just wrong for this type of application. The geometry for the wheel travel to shock travel ratio, right? Um, what does that mean? What, what does a 3.3 ratio mean? It means that um, if I was going to buy a coil spring for it, as a 220-pound rider, fully geared up, um, I would probably need a approximately a 2,400 pound per inch spring ratio. And I, I don't know if I can even buy one that high. Um, what that means for this particular shock is this is why everybody with master suspension has to go buy a custom aftermarket um shock pump that can go up to 600 psi because the shock um, has to be grossly over inflated in order to generate enough spring force to support any adult rider um, with a western frame for the most part um, 
This shock is not designed to hold more than 200 PSI. I had to put 400 to 450 PSI in it just to prevent it from bottoming out for just normal casual trail riding, not even hardcore trail riding. What happens when you overinflate the shock? Not only are you going to blow out the seals, but it's limited dampening here. It is not designed to handle 450 PSI. It, it just simply can't do it. So you might have a spring that can hold the weight, but it's no longer going to work like a shock. It's going to lose all of its dampening for the most part um, as it gets overinflated like that. That's why this sucks. So what are the alternatives? There's a popular shock um, that's being talked about, and this is a great solution. It's under $100 where the shock is replaced with a coil shock with a high load rating that greatly smooths out the, the travel, the ride experience of the master. However, that's really putting a Band-Aid on it. What you're doing is you have a powerful spring, but you're still only going to have 21 millimeters of shock travel to 70 millimeters of wheel travel. The only real solution is correcting the terrible suspension geometry, such as Kuba, with who's now formed a business partnership with Torque Pads. The Torque Pads slash Kuba suspension linkage totally changes the geometry here. Um, it goes by changing the linkages. It permits 50 millimeters of shock travel as opposed to this 21 millimeters. That's more than doubling the shock travel. So what does 70 millimeters of wheel travel to 50 millimeters of shock travel look like? That becomes a 1.4 ratio, um, which is actually ideal for a heavy rider with a heavy vehicle like the Bagode Master. Um, remember that most mountain bike calculators um, take into consideration that the front, the weight of the wheel and the rider is distributed between the front and the rear wheel. We don't have that liberty. On a unicycle, all the weight is on the back wheel. So the ratios and uh, the calculator numbers are going to be a little bit different. But if the stock linkage here would require a 2,400 pound inch spring ratio the, with 21 millimeters of travel, if you change that to 50 millimeters, you now require only a 400 pound spring. So all of a sudden we go from outrageous out of the bar ballpark, just completely unreasonable ratios to very reasonable. 400 pound, um, a 400 pound inch spring ratio is going to be very within the scope of normal stuff. So when you put a, just a, moderately decent mountain bike shock in with a 50 millimeter of travel, it's going to completely transform the ride dynamics of the wheel. You'll have correct suspension, um, compression, you'll have dampening, you'll be able to manage the load correctly. Um, you should be able to ride without bottoming out and without topping out. The whole point of good suspension is to keep the wheel sticking to the ground through chatter and jumps and all the stuff that we want to do. And that this setup is not designed to do that, where a correct suspension uh, geometry will, um, well, it'll make the wheel have good suspension. So those are my thoughts on the subject. I know this has got a little bit long-winded, but I think these are in important details, and maybe the average user won't have a good sense of how these things work. And uh, this long-winded description will help unpack uh, a better understanding.